This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 456, recorded on August 20th, 2020. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios. And here, Mike, I think fall is on its way. I went out this morning. It was 59 or something. You can kind of feel it. They're totally going to fake us out, right? It, it uh, is. It's, it's, it's cool back, right? mornings, but it's still like 90 during the day. But the mornings are tricking us into feeling like fall again, which I think you and I both like that season. I think, Bob, you're in Pittsburgh, right? And so yeah. you, you got to be feeling some fall weather on its way, right? Yeah. Have you felt a, a little, bit, cool, little coolness? Like, yeah, like right in the morning when we go out and walk the dog, it's a little cooler, but it's still, I'm still in shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, right on. Right. And, I'm not saying yeah. it's, I'm not saying it's winter. <laughs> It just, you can kind of start feeling it's coming. Ryan, you're screwed where you're at. You're, oh, you're, I know. you got another two months before. It was nice this morning. I opened the garage door and like, it was like low to mid sixties. It was like nice and crisp, yeah. super cool. But of course there's spots in the yard where I know it's just getting beat down by the sun, you know, and I'm just giving up. I heard you saying one time, if it's gone brown, just leave it, let it go dormant. So that's my plan now. So. Good. Yeah. It's hard to do that because it is tough. So I want to fix that. But yeah. you're never going to recover it. Like, you just no. need to let that thing go into winter. Speaking of that, next week, Dave McKay back on, and we will do our fall lawn part three of the lawn series here uh, for 2020. So Dave's coming back on. So if you want to join us live, head out to theaverageguy.tv. That's always 8 p.m. Central at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Of course, we'll take this show. We got a bunch of show notes. So we'll post that out at theaverageguy.tv and then slash HGG456. Six last week with Kevin. I really struggled with that number and I don't know why, but I did. And uh, so there it is. Of course, you can join us on our app as well, homegadgetgeeks.com. The best way to stream it if you're on the road or traveling, if we ever get to do that again, download the app. It's free Android, iPhone. You can stream the show live in a great way to do it as well. Well, I already introduced them, but Bob and Ryan are back. Uh, thinkcomputers.org. If you have not started uh, listening to their podcast from the last time they were here, and you guys do a live show on Wednesday nights as well. So very similar to what we hear to do at Home Gadget Geeks. Folks can come out, join you live, chat room, right? Folks can chime in, some of those kinds of things as well, right? What have you guys, Bob, what have you guys been talking about? What's kind of hot on the radar right now? If somebody hadn't listened to the show, what would they What would they come from? Uh, the big thing right now is we're getting ready for a graphics card launch. Um, so all we don't know, but uh, NVIDIA kind of teased their upcoming graphics cards, which of course powers all of these awesome gaming machines that we talk about so everybody's kind of in the rumor mill talking about what these next series of cards are going to be how expensive they're going to be uh you know that's kind of kind of really what's going on as far as news wise and then as far as reviews i mean we we've been taking a look at it, everything that ryan's been doing what's the last that you did those key lights the key uh, lights are on my last yeah, yep. and he did some streaming stuff i've been doing keyboards, motherboards, all kinds of different stuff. So keep them busy. If you guys could review one thing that you're currently not reviewing, what what, what would you review? Like, is there things you don't have access to? I, I think, think we get me, offered some things that we just don't take because they're not our normal wheelhouse, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, maybe smart home stuff we don't really do i know you know a couple years back we did some lights bob you did some lights and maybe some smart speaker yeah. type stuff um i could see us maybe getting into that but we're i mean pretty busy as we are yeah i would love to review cameras because i'm a camera guy <laughs> um but that's that's i don't know enough i i wouldn't know enough about it to really yeah you know cameras or drones or like that kind of stuff i'd love to do but that's just stuff i'll buy on my own and tinker around with when i can Got to get into the electric car market. Get Elon Musk on the phone. Yeah. Hey, you know, we'll review your yeah. Tesla, <laughs> we'll review all those. Audi, send us your new electric car. Yeah. I wonder yeah, how many podcasters be... they get that try to do that. Like, oh, okay, you have a yeah. review, a Tesla yeah. for review. Yeah. Well, for me, you know, I that's why I kind of did what I did with Home Gadget Geeks, is so I could have the experts on because I don't, I didn't want to be the experts in any of that stuff, but I certainly wanted to talk about it. And so it gave me a great opportunity. I'd like to have you guys on tonight. We're talking about cooling and kind of why it's important. This is, let me be real clear on this. Like 
the last time I really thought about cooling a computer, um, it the the computers came with fans, and that's all you did. You just turned them on. Like I had, I missed the whole uh, liquid cooling. Now the cooling with lights, the kind of all the cool stuff that over the last decade, probably, um, I just haven't. And for whatever reason, I bought computers that didn't need it or no, I guess they didn't because they've gotten along just fine without it. As I've been listening to you guys and as we've been talking about this, it's got me kind of thinking like, in fact, at one point, I'm so ignorant on fans. I had to send Ryan a note. I'm like, Hey, my case <laughs> is making a lot of noise. What do I buy? Right. And he gave me some rec- recommendations. We've talked about that here on the show, but, but Ryan, you're, this is, this is kind of your space. Why? I mean, do, does everybody have to worry about this? If I buy a computer, do I have to worry about the cooling or is it just a nice to have? Talk. About so it. I think we're kind of in two groups here, right? Um, the enthusiast gamer, do it yourself, build type of person, you know, and the, think computers we focus on we're definitely going to be interested in fans and how many and their placement and all all the things like that but with someone that's just going out and buying a an available part or pc off of the shelves at best buy or ordering something from hp or dell whatever the case may be when you're getting it from them they've already designed that chassis and the thermals for that to set it and forget it right they're going to typically have a maybe a fan in the front one in the back and they've designed their heat sinks and um, the power draw of all the components to just be as quiet as possible, as efficient as possible and without overheating, right? And that's the main thing we kind of want to focus on with cooling. Why is it important? Well, we don't want to overheat our components. We want to get a little more life out of them by keeping them cool and not overrunning them. And then if we really want to get into additional performance, additional cooling is required in order to do things like overclocking, right? Things get hotter when you throw more voltage to them and you're trying to run them faster. Um, So that's when things like, you know, improved heat sinks, aftermarket coolers, better fans, uh, depending on, you know, if you're liquid cooling or doing just air cooling, you know, there's all sorts of fan blade designs um, and types of flow that uh, come into that. So that's kind of the main reason it's important, right? Not so much on the store-bought, shelf-bought products, but when you're building them and choosing components for a build, that's when it really starts to become important. Bob, would you add anything to that? No, I mean, he pretty much covered that as when you buy something off the shelf, it's designed with cool, you know, yeah. to cool whatever you're buying, it's designed for that. Now, if you're building your own, you obviously have to think about cooling because you're the you're gonna be the one who's installing the fans in the case. You're the one who's going to be picking the different parts. So you kind of need to have at least a general understanding. You can't just put the parts in with no fans and then expect the best performance. Cause you're more than likely going to overheat. If you do that, Mike, are, go ahead. Mike. Go ahead. No, you, I was going to ask you, are you in a situation today? Like, what do you have that needs fans and what do you have that doesn't? Well, it's funny. So when I, you guys know my story, I've shared it a million times on here of going from, you know, the iMac that sits right there. That's now just a ham radio computer to uh, a small junky quote, you know, gaming rig that I try to go. And then now I just, you know, got all new parts and put it into a, a new chassis. But for me, what I, what got me was the noise level. So this thing sits right here. I like to, you know, it's got a, a nice tempered glass thing. I like to look into it. I like you to see right here, but the stuff I hit in there before the stock stuff was had to spin up so fast when I was playing my big games, it was really loud. And so uh, I actually, you know, reached out to Ryan too. And I said, you know, what should I go with? I've never thought about cooling. So this machine Uh, A few months ago was the first time I'd ever thought about any cooling that wasn't just the stock cooling that came with the computer. And uh, we ended up going with the the AIO route and went with an Alpha Cool Ice Bear cooler. And it's been amazing. I was shocked. Number one, the difference between the stock cooler and this cooler in terms of temperature. That was just really cool to see, right? So I'm when I'm playing Call of Duty, uh, which maybe isn't the most taxing, but I think it's a pretty taxing game. It's the most taxing game I play on here. And I, I play it, the computer is still dead silent doesn't make any sound um i got different front fans for the front so it's got front intake it's got the aio for the cpu and then with a obviously the rad up top and that thing doesn't make noise i can't tell the difference between when i'm idle and when it's full throttle it's just super super quiet which made all the difference for me so but i don't think jim if it wasn't for sound i don't know if i ever would have thought about it because well maybe i would have if i would have started noticing bad performance on on temperature but i wasn't monitoring temperature 
Uh, I rarely ever did that unless I have a yeah. problem, right? right? I'm not looking at it, but now it's like a competitive thing with myself. Like I am constantly, now I have the temperature up in the corner. I'm watching it. What, what does it do when I play flight simulator? Well, what does it do when I play call of duty, right? What's, what's causing the CPU stuff. And, and knowing that this thing, um, Oh, what's that test you, that everyone burns out their CPU on prime 95 or something prime like 95, that? Yeah. Prime 95. So I ran prime 95 on this thing for a long time, probably longer than I should have. And this cooler kept it super cool. It was awesome. Well, great to watch below the average of what I saw, even for this cooler. So once you get into it, it's like a slippery slope because then it's almost like competitive with yourself of how cool can I get this and how quiet can I go? The community talked me into buying like a Dell 3050, which is a little one of those little mini puck, right? And and I yep. installed the SSD in it. And I actually thought at one point it was fanless. And the other day I was running my radar, which is an application I use all the time for weather in it. It sucks down a lot of data. You just, we were talking in pre-show about flight simulator and data. It's constantly upgrading, you know, the maps in there and stuff. That thing actually kicked on a fan. I didn't even know existed in there. Like I heard the fan come out. I'm like, where is that fan? Oh my gosh, this little thing has a fan in it. So yeah. you know, it's surprising, uh, kind of where and how they hide them. Ryan, when we think about, so you're you're doing a build, and I mm -hmm. think the the very first thing we start with is a case, right. and. Like, well, I used to look at cases for how cool they looked. Like, that's what I was looking for. But now there's some thermals in that. So as we think about, okay, I'm buying a case. I know I'm going to have higher end. I know I'm going to overclock it. I know there needs to be some cooling considerations. As we look at cases, what kind of things do we need to look for? Yeah, so number number one, I think, is to start off the uh, number and size of fans, right? So, and you're right, Um how, how the case looks is also very important to a lot of people. And some people will sacrifice performance and thermals just to get the look that they want, right? They don't care if it's running hot or making noise. They want it to look a certain way. Um, the case that I am using, for example, is goes against a lot of the thermal, good thermal practices, right? It's a solid aluminum front. There is no intake at the front. Glass panels aren't great for um, getting heat out of the case either. Um, so we've, we've got to kind of think about what does my front intake look like? Uh, Mike mentioned he's got a couple of case fans up front. So those are going to pull in cool air from the outside. They're going to path through uh, the system. It's going to go past his GPU and his CPU. Um, in his case, he's got the liquid cooler. But if you've got a standard tower or normal heat sink in there, it's going to pick up some of that heat and then exhaust it out the back fan, maybe the power supply, maybe some fans up top. So really, um, for intake type of things. We're going to typically have two or three fans up front, maybe some on the bottom of the case. And then you'll typically have a couple towards the top and one at the back. Now those can be anywhere from our standard uh, fan sizes right now are about 120 millimeters to 140 millimeters. Used to mostly see the 80 millimeter fans. Um, every now and then we'd get some 92, but then I don't know, 10 years ago or so, I think 120 millimeter really became the de facto standard and it's kind of stayed that way for most most of the time. You can also get up to 200 millimeter fans and, and those suckers are huge. The nice thing about those is they spin really slow most of the time, but they still move a good amount of air. So they're super quiet, but they're still very efficient. So, um, and then in addition to just those fan mounts, we wanna think about airflow restrictions. So what kind of material are we trying to pull air through? What does our ventilation look like at the front? Um, is it a, a mesh material that's gonna filter out some dust at the same time? Is it just some holes in the front? Is it some slats that let air from in from the sides and then the air kind of goes through the case? Those are all sorts of things that we kind of want to look at to say, hey, is this case going to do well for my build and the components I'm going to put inside of it? Uh, anything you want to add there, Bob, about case I mean, design and, and thermals? The, yeah, the biggest thing is what is the, the front panel, what how it's designed and what it's made out of. Ryan said mesh. Mesh is typically high airflow. That's what you want for the best cooling. Sadly, a lot of these new cases are all glass front with like a little slats on the side. So you don't get that optimal cooling that you'd want. So the biggest thing is, again, just what the front of the case is made out of. And then look at all the placements of where fans are installed or can be installed and see if that's blocked by anything. Do they have glass at the top as well, where then again, if even if you put fans there, they're kind of pointless. Um, so th those are the things you really want to look at. Um, and how many fans, you know, we've seen cases that have one that come with one fan, which is kind of pointless because if it's intaking, there's no other fan to, of course, exhaust that, uh, you know, the air as well. So 
yeah but like i said just mostly it's that front panel because that's gonna start your cooling processes as far as intaking cool air and, if, and that's something i wish i would have focused on when i was building this obviously because we talked about i didn't realize it till after i kind of got all the components in but i've got the uh fractal design i think it's like a focus g or something like that and the top part so the front's great it's all mesh and then it's got like the metal mesh in front of the foam mesh so but it's, it's all the, across the entire front so airflow is perfect it pulls in a lot of uh fresh air but up top where the rad goes you have to put the rad with the hoses towards the back because the the 3.5 inch drive slots would block the hoses on the front end. Well, what that means though is the hoses stop, they rub against the back fan, so the back fan doesn't even spin. So I don't have any rear exhaust here, and it's a, it, it was a really tight fit up against the motherboard too, uh, up at the top to with that rad up top so it was just i'm sure there were cases out there that would have fit it a lot better it works great and actually i see no side effects from not having the back fan i think actually from the front up through the rad and the rad pushes out the top um works just fine for me i don't notice any difference but again one of those things if i i went back and read the reviews of this case and they say exactly that it just why mm -hmm. i wasn't looking for anything on cooling i didn't think i would have to do it but they say the exact thing with it. if you're going to put the rad up top uh, you know, you're going to be really confined for space. Yeah, a lot of times you'll pay a little more for that extra space or the thought out design of, you know, cooling and efficiency. Some cases will even have, if you're going to do a radiator build, they'll have a removable panel up top. So you mount your radiator and fans to it and then drop that back down into the case uh, for ease of uh, installation. There's all sorts of crazy, awesome designs to make things more efficient. Obviously, the price goes up with those typically, but uh, they do make things a lot easier. But yeah, I was going to... Turn it around here, I've got a bunch of components off to the side here, but kind of talking about fans, we've got, this is kind of a standard Corsair 120 millimeter um, LED fan. It's just a single color LED. It's not RGB or anything, but this is just kind of your standard 120 millimeter fan. But I mentioned a 200 millimeter fan. And oh, wow. this is the nice tan and brown Noctua. So when you hold those up to each other, like that's the size difference we're talking about between a 120 and a 200. So just to kind of give you a, an idea of what we're, some people are putting into cases. So is the benefit there a lot more airflow at a lot lower RPM? Right. Yeah. You're okay. this like on the back here. This is a. Uh, we'll see if it'll focus in. Let me pull back just a bit. Yeah, it's gonna not like it. Uh, Eight hundred. had it right yeah, at the end. Just there. for a second. Eight hundred yeah. RPMs. Uh, this one here is a, a twelve volt um, fan, so it's gonna only gonna spin at eight hundred uh, RPM, which is a uh, pretty slow when it comes to to fan speeds, but it's gonna you know be a lot more quiet and still push a good amount of air through uh, your case or whatever you got this. Uh, does, Ryan, does the direction matter? Like if, whether if I pull it from the front and push it through the back or if I pull it from the back and push it through the front, does that really matter? So, so that's where we get into things like positive and negative case pressure. Yeah. Um, so you'll see some people that end up with these cases that are just full of dust. And, you know, and, and for me, I always typically build and never end up with this problem, but I'm a fan of pulling in cool air from the front or bottom and exhausting hot out the top and back. I mean, we're just working with heat, heat rises, yeah. let let it do its thing, right? And uh, let the fans help out to do it. Um, that's my uh, recommendation. I say that, and the case that I have here does not, again, follow those thermal <laughs> recommendations. It has three fans on the bottom for intake, which is okay. But then the front two actually blow air out the front. And I say out the front, they run into an, a solid aluminum panel and then the air has to make a 90 degree turn to go out some vents. And then there's a single exhaust at the back. So it's, it's got those vents kind of, they're there, but they're hidden on the side. Is that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And only on one side, because it's a solid glass panel on one side and then some kind of hidden on the other. So yeah. the other not thing, ideal, but it works. The other thing, just like Ryan talked about dust, is that most cases these days, the intakes, at least the intakes on the front will have a dust filter. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing the air coming in from the back, that back fan is not gonna have any type of dust filter. So whatever's gonna fit through there is gonna fly through and get into your system, uh, which probably wouldn't be the best thing. You just yeah. could blow it out, right? Can't you just go in there, blow it out? Uh, it out yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could. I, I, I've right. seen pictures okay. of people who haven't um, done that in Long time no, and, uh, yeah. no, I know. I used to, um, because you know, you guys are this way. You're the you're the neighborhood tech guy, right? In the old days with oh, yeah. PCs, whenever we did PC, and so they'd bring them over. You know, hey, this doesn't work, and they'd bring them over. And the first thing I do is put them on the driveway, and I get my leaf back, and I would open up every. I take off 
every, you know, panel and then turn on the leaf vac. And oh my God. I mean, it was, it was both disgusting and satisfying to watch yeah. all that dust just kind of woof, evacuate onto the, you know, onto the driveway. So I don't, I don't know about you guys. I, I see because we've, you know, we're in the phone era. I, I'm just seeing less and less PCs from the average consumer standpoint. We're just, they're either they're buying them, they're not breaking as often, or they're not buying them anymore. It's their phones. And, and I just, I'm not doing the tech support like I used to. So I don't see those computers anymore. And if I do, they're super old, you know, when, when they're coming to somebody's like, hey, I can't get my computer to boot. And it's because the CMOS is battery because it's 12 years old. <laughs> You know, it's like the like, laptop Bob got the other day to try and yeah. fix it. It was running XP or something, right? It was, yeah. <laughs> my girlfriend's sister had this computer, like, oh, I, I need it for school. And I was like, okay, like, this should be easy. Like, but it was from 2003, maybe? Yeah, or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was really old. I was like, this isn't even worth fixing. And no. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And I feel like I'm pretty good at. Yeah. at computers and i was and i even told ryan he's like yeah it's, it's just not it's not you kind of forget don't you you're like oh how did we troubleshoot these things like what <laughs> yeah. were the tools that we use yeah. and before? it doesn't even have like i'm so used to windows 10 and you just go in the you know you go down and right. you just go in the search right. to search for your settings and i'm like wait a second i actually have to go through and find these and yeah no, so long as there is gaming though there will be a huge market oh, yeah. for these yeah. computers i was shocked my uh my brother-in-law, who's 22 now, called me yesterday. He and he is not not a tech guy. He's getting better just because I I am, and so he's able to do some stuff. But uh, not tech guy at all. Has always been a console stream or ga gamer. And he's like, hey, uh, I think I'm gonna build my first gaming PC. Like, how how do I even start with this? Like, wh where do I go? And uh, it's because of Twitch. He watches Twitch, and he actually wants to maybe try streaming. And uh, then he's like, well, I just know it's a lot easier if you play on the same computer. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is. And if, especially if you're just starting out and, and he wants to get to that. So, I mean, it, you see how many people are on Twitch. And I think with gaming, especially and young kids, uh, I, I think gaming computers are taking off more than they ever have before. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it was actually f funny side note on the popularity of Twitch and gaming. Tim, the tap man yesterday had this streak <laughs> going and he's one of the biggest streamers, and he could not get a win on this silly little game. Yeah. And he had 347,000 people Jeez. watching him yesterday wow. when he finally got his win. He did get a win? <laughs> he I've got been, it, I've yeah. been following that, yeah. That's so nice. he, he got it yesterday. 347,000. I mean, that's a city. And uh, mm -hmm. it, I think it broke some records, um, broke some of his personal records. He usually averages around thirty or 40,000. So 347,000 just shows you the popularity of uh, – Online gaming is it's just crazy. Mike, if you're gonna so you need to tell him first thing. If he's gonna build his own computer, he needs to go over to thinkcomputers.org. Already did. Okay, there awesome. Go. Yeah, that's good. I yeah. said, here's your reviews, because he was like, <laughs> he's all into reviews and he watches before he buys something, he will watch 20 YouTube videos. I said, dude, I guarantee the computer part you're gonna be looking for, they have it over here. Just go read the review. I said, and if they don't have it, ask me. And uh, then we'll go from there. I said, but they got everything over there. So I already did. It was it was the nice. easiest one to recommend. No, nice work. We didn't even Perfect. set that up. We didn't even set up. <laughs> we did <laughs> I, 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 I forgot about it. I was like, wait, these are the guys I just told him about last that's night. It's so always nice. When it works yeah, funny. Ryan, could I retro? Okay, we talked about putting filters in front. Could mm -hmm. If I had a box and it didn't come with a filter, can are there retro quick kits that would allow me to maybe in, install that on the front or do some things to filter that air before it comes in? Maybe, uh, maybe not a kit. But I'm okay. sure there's some things you could do. A lot of times, so the fan is typically on, you know, on an OEM PC is either going to be mounted to the inside metal or the ex exterior. If it's mounted on the interior, a lot of times you can pop that plastic front off and maybe put some mesh in front of the metal uh, grill that's there. That'll kind of do some of that. It's going to reduce the airflow, right? Because that fan was specced for whatever ventilation they put in there from the factory. So it will kind of reduce the amount of airflow, but it'll keep help keep some of that dust out for sure. So say I have a cooler master. I have one of those very popular cooler, cooler master um, land, you know, that's square. Yep. They must've sold a million of those things, right? Yeah. That has a really nice front grill. Could I retro something on the front of that? Knowing, you could probably figure something out. Cause yeah. it gets, it gets pretty dusty. I actually just use the grill as kind of a dust collector. You know, you yep. just go in there from time to time, wipe it off and it, it does that nicely um, um, for you. So I could, if I don't, if I'm not currently, is, and is that a good idea to, to try and capture the dust before it gets into the computer or is it six to one, half a dozen to the other? 
I mean, it kind of depends on your environment, right? As well. I've done so many builds over the last 20 years and I never end up with a dusty, dirty interior. I don't know if it's because I'm just building them just right or I keep things clean, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not a huge like proponent of filters. I think they're a nice thing to have, but I don't think they make or break a, a case by any means. Okay. Good, good to know. All right, let's focus yeah. a little bit on CPUs because when we think yeah. about, and it will save GPUs a little bit because that is an area, like I remember when GPUs were just nothing. <laughs> and then they put little fans on them and then oh, they yeah. put bigger fans, like the whole world of GPUs exploded. So we'll cover that one next. But when you think about CPU uh, today, I would think with the modern CPU, one, everything has to have some kind of cooling on it. But now you've got a couple kinds of different options. So it's kind of, Walk me through if I'm gonna if I'm gonna cool my CPU. What kind of options do I have besides just regular passive cooling? Yeah, so I've got a, quite a plethora of, of equipment, and it really shows how much tech I hoard and probably should get rid of. But I'm one of those. Hey, I might need that cooler someday. Yeah. Today's that day, right? For, for a podcast. For <laughs> it's sure. for the podcast. <laughs> yes, shake your head, Bob. I see all the boxes behind you. <laughs> Uh, so right here is a cooler that a lot of people are probably pretty familiar with. This is the uh, stock Intel heat sink. This one came with my 4790K uh, quad core, eight thread processor. Um, I have a 4770 from a Gen 3 okay. from six years ago. Same stock cooler. Yep. Measure the temperatures for what I'm using it for just fine. Yeah. So we have, let me, we'll use this as a pointer, I guess. Uh, so we have a copper. It's really going to focus on my face, but uh See if we can. I had that other camera set perfectly. So we've got like a copper uh, centerpiece here that's going to make contact with our CPU's uh, integrated heat spreader. That's a little metal piece that's on top of the the CPU that we put in. So that makes good contact via thermal paste uh, or some sort of pre-applied thermal material, um, and then it spreads out into a cheaper aluminum heat sink. So right. So we've got copper, which uh, transfers heat better than the aluminum, but is more expensive uh, than aluminum. So that's why we've got kind of those double materials there. This is a pretty standard cooler. You're not going to get good overclocks out of this, if anything. Um, but it does the job and is pretty quiet. And, and for, cost, most, uh, for most people who are just using their computer, which yep. isn't a lot of people anymore, but for most people, that stock cooler is going to be fine. For where we're headed, where we're getting a lot more enthusiastic yep. gamers in here, we're getting kind of serious. So walk through some of those options. Yeah. So stepping things up a little bit is this is a stock cooler from my latest CPU. This is the uh, Wraith, AMD Wraith. Is it the Wraith Spire? I always forget what this one is called. Uh, it's the, 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 it's not the Spire. I forget Just what it's the, called, but it's... Bob, Bob will look it up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there we go. So again, we have a copper base. I'm going to get this focused one of these times. Uh, copper base with uh, heat pipes here. So we ha you can see these heat pipes that actually make direct contact with uh, the CPU again. Um, and this is designed to cool my eight core 16 thread uh, Ryzen uh, 7 3800X CPU. So uh, again, we have the copper base switching over to aluminum heat pipe, or I'm sorry, aluminum fins, but we have the heat pipes that run through there and we're cooled by uh, about a 90, 92 millimeter fan. So we've stepped up from uh, Intel's stock cooling uh, and AMD's very similar cooling that they used to have. But these heat pipes, you know, allow us to bring the heat away from the CPU a little bit more. Um, the fins help to uh, provide a surface to allow the fan to blow air across them for more efficient cooling. How, how much more efficient is a fan like that compared to just the stock fan? Do you know? Efficiency wise? Just kind of thinking like, does it give you twice as much? I mean, just throw out a you can even make up a number if you want, but um, I mean the fan design between them, the fan yeah. itself, the design, those blades are very similar between the two. Um, so I don't know that I'd say it's the fan so much as the yeah. heat sink design. The sink itself, um, it definitely it's, keeps it cooler. Like I mean, that's an upgrade. Oh, absolutely. From, okay. Yeah. Uh, and as a higher thermal uh, threshold, right? You're going to be able to get more headroom and cooling out of these. Uh, get the chip hot. You can get the chip hotter, and it'll keep it cooler. Yeah, not necessarily get it hotter, but oh, allow okay. it to stay cooler longer. Got it. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we have a really popular cooler here from Cooler Master. If if anybody's been in the game for any amount of time in the last five years or more, this is the Hyper 212 Evo. As you can see, it's a lot taller. Um, again, we have the heat pipes, copper heat pipes that make direct contact with the CPU on the bottom. A ton of fins here and then a nice fan to keep it cool. The really nice thing about this is it's $25, $30. You get it on sale. 
and it's one of the best air coolers out there. They've been making it forever and just it's the best bang for your buck. If anybody ever asks like, hey, I just want an improved cooler for air, but I don't want to spend a ton of money, Hyper 212 Evo, done. Yeah. And it's amazing how much of a difference. So I had, I don't, something very similar to that, but I went from a stock cooler in my Unraid box. So in a small 2U, or is it a 4U server chassis? It's, I can't remember. I think it's 4U actually, maybe 2U. Hey, either way, in there I had the stock cooler. It's just an Intel 3770. Um, but, you know, when you're using it as a server, that's always on, doing a lot of transcoding with Plex, things like that. I upgraded to something very similar to what Ryan just showed. And I cut off 30 degrees from my, I was I was I was up in the 130s and I brought it down and now it maxes out at you know 90 uh, 99 100 and 102 100 and maybe 107 um, but right around there and I was shocked like from a 30 dollar cooler I think it's one I yeah. bought and uh, can make that big of a difference which is going to save my CPU in the long run especially if you have something that you run a lot and then I just want to show this one this is a uh, older Swift Tech this was for cooling a uh, Athlon 64. Mm, I'm trying to remember the model number 6,400 maybe. Uh, but this is a huge cool. copper base. It's very, it's really heavy, but it looks like a bunch of screws in there, which is essentially what it is. But all these ridges along each one of these pins just adds more surface area to the cooler. Mm -hmm. So we would have a fan mounted on the top and blowing down on it. Obviously the 120 is too big. Um, so we'd have like an 80 millimeter probably on this cooler, uh, but just kind of a cool, neat design uh, that, I, I just that, I'm that's engineering forever. like yeah. that's a real engineering they, like how, how do we get the most surface area yep to dissipate this heat that's pretty cool. absolutely bob did you find anything while you were looking uh the the amd coolers the wrath prism wraith prism, prism yeah yeah, yeah it's right. got a it's uh, got a rgb lighting in the fan as well as a ring around that you can control um so yeah we've got things like rgb lighting and coolers now and uh, is right, that the stock one that comes with your cpu that is the stock cooler that comes with the this it's a nice stock too. cooler. Ryan, if you oh, want yeah. to bring the uh, the cooler master cooler up real quick, yeah, just so I can. So if, if people don't understand exactly how it works, just hold it up. Um, so at, so you see those heat pipes at the bottom. Um, your heat gets transferred from your CPU, and then the heat goes up into that heat sink stack, where it again transfers to the heat sink those are all those fins and then your fan takes that heat and dissipates it out through your case so typically out through the heat sink and then out through one of your exhaust fans either on the top or the rear of your case that's kind of how that works right Would you so want to line that up with the directional the direction of the air in absolutely your case? okay yeah so. yeah so if the front of your case is here and you've got fans blowing in this way we want to continue that air so then we've got the fan that's spinning, obviously pushing through uh, the heat sink and out the back of the case or, or the top. Um, and a, another point to make is these aren't just um, solid copper rods most of the time um, on good coolers. They're actually hollow and will have a liquid or gas in there that heats up, turns into a gas, goes up to uh, change forms, right? And then cools to a liquid, drops back down and just completes that cycle, cycle over and over, right? Makes, makes a cycle. A uh, couple comments from the chat room. Uh, Joe says, great cooler, crappy fan. The one I think that he was referring to the one that you were showing uh, right there. Um, Jim uh, also says, uh, look at that. The one you showed looks like a blooming onion. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm <laughs> yeah. not going to take a bite, but uh, yeah. 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 And then Tony says, or my nail gun went crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's also uh, a possibility. Tony's got that. Uh, he says he's got that cooler. I think that you were showing there, right? Yep. So that's kind of the upgrade from just stock cooler. Now we're talking about upgrade. These are still heat sinks that yeah. you're, you're not going to be running. You know, yeah, you've got some air or some kind of liquid in those pipes, but this is this is not traditional liquid cooling. No. And this and is there's... where it's gone nuts. Like the whole liquid space has just gotten uh, crazy good. And so let's yeah. let's talk a little bit about that. Too. I will say I'll say one more thing real yeah, quick before fine. we move on to that. This so this is like a, a tower cooler, and there's there's more advanced coolers for higher performance where they'll have a second uh, tower next to it and a second fan in between, so we get just extra uh, surface area to to cool CPU. So um, there's a big Noctua that I know Bob has reviewed. Uh, what are some of the others that you've looked at? The Scythe. Um, uh, units the, the Scythe Ninja 5, the Dark, oh, uh, the be Corsair, quiet. Yeah, the Corsair A500. 
Uh, yep. Be quiet makes one. There's pretty much any major cooling company has a massive, like just massive air cooler um, that's around the eighty to one hundred dollar range, um, which is made for the highest end CPUs out there. Basically, people for overclocking. Do, do you, Bob? Do you get what you pay for with these fans, or is there a sweet spot in there where? For... Typically, um, if you're going for the high end, um, eighty to one hundred dollars, you do get what you pay for. They they're all made for a specific thermal limit, um, so you know what you can push these coolers to. I would say though, just like with what Ryan said, that Hyper Two One Two, any of the Hyper Two One Twos, they're like twenty to. Thirty-five dollars, and yeah. the for the performance that you get out of them, how quiet they are, how easy to install they are, that is the kind of what I would recommend to anybody um, because it, it's easy to install one. Because a lot of these bigger coolers just think you have this massive two tower cooler, and then you're trying to connect it in there. It's it's a lot of work. Where the Hyper Two One Two is decently small, and it doesn't make a whole lot of noise, and does have much better performance than your typical stock cooler. So for a, for a cooler, for the whole unit, if I was in that 30 to $50 range, that's probably kind of the sweet spot for these. Yeah. And, and you can get, you can, if you, you're just burning money, you can do that and go higher. But if you're seeing something cheap, you know, if it's a $15 you, <laughs> on Amazon, you probably want to avoid it, right? Yeah. And I, like I said, I think that the, the Hyper 212 has just proved itself over, there's, I think, five or six different versions or generations of the cooler. They've all had great performance. Um, if you go on Amazon, the reviews are all typically five star. It's just that it's just the proven cooler in its price range, and I think that price range is very good for what you're getting. But before we move on and talk about liquid coolers for box fans, same same idea of in other words, if, if I'm spending fifteen to twenty five dollars for for a fan, is that kind of the sweet spot for those? And it, I should avoid the six and seven dollar fans that that are kind of out there. Is that is that right? Typically, uh, yeah, it all depends on what you're trying to cool. If you're doing yep. just a, like typical air cooling, if you're doing fans that are going to go on a radiator, there's obviously different prices in there. Yeah, yeah. If you want RGB, yeah. If you, if you want, want a single lighting. color LED, do you want a addressable RGB? Yeah, fans. How, can how much does RGB add to the to the price? Yeah. Generally. <laughs> Oh, I guess it depends. There's right? a huge but, range. Yeah. yeah. So typically these days we see um, if you want to get a set of three RGB fans, three 120 millimeter RGB fans that come with a controller so that you can either connect them to software or you can have like a button that will change the different things. Typically those are around 70 to $110 okay. for three fans. Okay. Um, and then there's more advanced ones that, that like the Corsair ones that are super advanced that are, that I have that have 36 RGB LEDs in each. I think they're <laughs> 150 for three or something like that. So do they all have their own address? Are they all addressable? Every yeah, every, every, yeah, all 36 RGBs <laughs> in the fan are individually addressable. So you could set them yeah. to different colors. You could have each one doing a different effect. It's and it's all through software too. So it's pretty right. it's pretty crazy. Uyghur, you should be impressed that I knew how to say <laughs> are they addressable? Addressable. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Because if we're talking about RGB, you're not an RGB guy. No, I'm thinking that's that that short woman in the Supreme Court, isn't it? Isn't uh, that? Uh, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> RBG. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So I don't uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's let's dive into liquid. Where sure. are we when we think about the different kinds of uh, cooling that's available for us that way? Ryan, where are we at today? Yeah. So we're a lot further along than we were when people were first getting into it. You would hear crazy stories of. I had a friend that used a uh, old heater core out of some old Jeep or something as a radiator <laughs> and these pond pumps that you could get at Home Depot and tubing with the, you know, the ratchet style crimp, you know, connector. So like that was way back in the day before companies really started uh, focusing on this market. Now we have these awesome kits like the one that uh, Mike has. It's got, you know, it's all in one but it can expand via these really nice quick connect, no leak connections. Um, it's got RGB lighting uh, on the fans. It, you know, they can have controllers to control the speed of the fan or the speed of the pump uh, to circulate the fluid inside. All sorts of uh, just awesome you know, monitoring and uh, integration throughout your whole system. So um, all-in-ones are kind of what we focus on when we talk about liquid cooling. We have looked at some uh, do-it-yourself component by component 
um, kits. And I actually have one that I was really hoping would show up uh, for today, but it's actually going to be here tomorrow um, that I'm really excited to build for the system here. Um, but I've got a cooler here from Corsair. This is the H115i. Man, there's so many, so many, uh, what is this? H115i RGB Pro XT. So I'm going to hold it up here. Obviously, we have a radiator, right? And this is a uh, 280 millimeter radiator. So what that means is this will fit two 140 millimeter fans. So that means we have 280 millimeter uh, radiator. They go side by side here. And we obviously have our little mounting holes at the corner. Um, so pretty standard radiator for an all-in-one cooler. Um, we have our permanently attached um, tubes that go down into a all-in-one pump and cooling block. So again, we see the copper here. Let's pop this protection off here. So we have a copper base um, and a pump built all into one. So uh, we have a little Corsair logo here and around here we have some RGB lighting. We've Ryan, some... are those serviceable at all? Or is it, it literally is all in one? You're not going to, you don't want all in one and not okay. user serviceable. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. There's no easy way to yeah. refill does these. The, does the fans push the air through the radiator or does it draw it through the radiator? So that's that you does have a couple matter? options. Uh, okay. This kit comes uh, you know, with the option to, uh, obviously this is typically either going to mount at the front of your case and you would typically have either, a fan on either side. Let me uh, actually, I've got a different radiator here to demonstrate this a little better. This one's uh, not attached to anything, but it does have fans on it. Um, so in this current configuration, when these are spinning, they're going to be pushing air through the radiator. That's my recommended um, setup. 99% of the time is to push air through. And you want to make sure that you have a fan that's designed for um, higher static pressure, right? Because there's a lot more resistance to push air through the fins of a radiator than just a standard case fan. So a lot of times you'll see fans that are designed uh, with like an SP in their name for static pressure and some of them are AF for airflow. So that's something you definitely want to take a look at um, and all the statistics that are typically available. So that's my recommendation typically is to push. Um, you could do a push pull and have a fan on each side as long as you've got them oriented correctly, get a little doubling up there. Some people like don't like the look of a fan so they'll put the fan up top and have it pull through. I just think you get a little better performance uh, with push. Um, I wouldn't say that's a, a guarantee or anything. Um, and people go back and forth on that all the time. The arguments are always there. What's better, push, pull, whatever the case may be. I like to typically either have a radiator up front in the case, pulling in cool air from the outside um, with the fans and pushing it through the rest of my case. Um, or mounting it at the top and not even introducing that hot air to the case. If it's up top and the only heat is being transferred through those liquid tubes, it's not even having a chance to heat up the rest of the PC and it's exhausting it straight off the top. Um, I, I followed your advice there and I've been really surprised because yeah. so all my CPU heat, it doesn't even touch the case because it's at the top, right? And the five yeah. fans in, like you suggested, pushing through the radiator up out the top. And my GPU stays so much cooler that way because all that heat isn't in the case. So my GPU just has the stock fan on it. And even when I'm pinned there, it's the only heat in the case is really coming from the GPU. And it's got right. fresh air coming from the front right across the GPU. That goes up and it might be introducing a little more heat to the rad, right? Because you're pull the if there is a little heat in there from the GPU, it's going to pull that air right across the rad. But right. it hasn't affected me at all. And it's been great to keep that GPU at a lower temp. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, you pull in that cool air from the outside and push it out uh, through the radiator. Now, if you have a dual I, setup where you're cooling, you know, maybe a CPU and a GPU and you have two radiators, right, that 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 heat's just going to stay in, in, and cycle out. So uh, no worries there. I, I think the hardest part in all this, though, can we just be honest, as a new guy to all this, <laughs> I was trying to follow Ryan's recommendation. I, I, I kept getting my fans installed backwards. And I would go in and all of a sudden one was pushing and one was pulling and they say, well, look at the sticker. And I didn't know what, okay, I'm looking at the sticker, but does that mean it's pushing or pulling? That is the hardest part about installing fans is knowing which way is push and which way is pull. Or it's maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just error. not smart. And that's probably more like, it's probably user error, but man, that was difficult. <laughs> How do we tell Ryan? Is there a way to just look at the fan and to know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean besides when you get, an arrow, like when, when you get... I mean, when you know, you know, you just kind of figure it out, right? Yeah. The, the way the blades go. But a lot of times, 
Uh, this fan doesn't have it, but a lot of the times on the side yeah. right here, yeah. there'll be an arrow to the direction of the air and the way that the blade should be spinning. Right. Yeah, it's I get really angry idea. when I get a fan and I can't, I, like, I don't know, like, yeah. I don't know where this thing is doing. And some of them don't give you enough pressure. Like, you put your hand in the back and you put your hand in the front and you like, kind of have it? a hard to, yeah. you're, you're, you're I, like, I take a tissue and I just, if, if it oh, sucks it yeah. to the side, that's my test. <laughs> not, not, it doesn't suck no, it in. I take it, I, I hold it long and if it goes like this or if it blows it away. Yeah, yeah. the tissue test is, I think, the right, I just test. splash water on it and see where things go. <laughs> From there, um, <laughs> but it's a pain if you get their whole rad installed and you realize you have your fans backwards, which is exactly what I did. Yes. Had the whole in yeah. this tiny case I told you guys is not fun to work in, and uh, then everything was backwards. Especially with with the you've got to not only power the fans, but if they're RGB, you've got those cables to connect to your controller, so all that lighting. Yeah, and usually those cables are right up at the top of the motherboard, underneath where the rad's gonna mm -hmm. hit. <laughs> That's where I was trying to get my fingers up in there, and it was it, it's a fun. I had built a lot of computers, but they had all been junker, you know, who cares, put it all in a box, you know, they're unraid builds, they're things like that. I had never built a pretty PC before. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a whole different ball game when you're having to deal with cable management, fans, all that crazy stuff. Um, Ryan, because case temperature matters, right, inside mm -hmm. how that, that it, it affects everything, right? Is there any, um, are there any solutions a little off topic and not in the notes, but for cooling for, for the hard drives? Like, so, you know, we, we are seeing more, you know, larger spinners and some people are putting those spinners in units to use them as data drives. Are, are we addressing those? I, I mean, I know there's case fans you can put up in front of them and some of those kinds of things, but are there any specific cooling options for, for drives? There are, I can't reach it, uh, but I have an older, uh, like the old, uh, Western digital, um, I'm trying to remember the name of them, but they came in, I think they called it an ice pack. It was like a, a, a two and a half inch drive in a three and a half inch case. Right. And it had, it was just aluminum and would transfer the heat, mm -hmm. um, via some heat pads to keep that, that drive cool for server environments, things like that. Yeah. Um, Bob can talk a little, probably a little more on like current drives, NVMe drives, things like that, that come with yeah, the heat sinks. Want, I, can, looked at them. I can yeah. grab yeah, that's okay. right, yeah, yeah. right so um with with the newer drives like uh with a like I've got a two and a half inch ssd right here an older one um a lot of times with these drives they're not going to get hot enough uh to overwork like the metal body on this if you open one up there's typically a thermal pad that makes contact from the the chips themselves to the the case and just dissipates heat um and uses that whatever air flows available inside the case to keep it cool um Regarding NVMe drives, typically on those, we want the uh, um, memory chips actually to be a little warm, but we want the controller to stay cooler. So uh, you'll either have a, a little foil sticker. There's usually a sticker on your NVMe drive, those M.2 drives. Um, a lot of times they'll have a copper sticker there to actually spread some of that heat out. Or you've got that drive, the WD Black SN750, yeah. which I have in my PC as well, has a nice little uh, aluminum oh. cooler there that was designed by EK. Um, they're a big water cooling uh, company. They paired up with Western Digital there. I have this one as well. This is pure copper on this one. Uh, and that's so, just all passive, right? I mean, there's you're, yeah. you're, you're just trying to dissipate the heat off of the chip. Yeah, so the thing with the, the current gen storage, uh, PCI Express storage, is that these controllers um, will get so hot that they'll actually throttle. So you'll your performance will, you know, as you typically when you write to the drive, it will be at its top performance and then you'll see it drop dramatically. It's because these, the controllers are actually getting too hot. Um, and we've seen that on, especially like Samsung, the first gen of the PCI mm -hmm. Express drives um, had that problem. So you see a lot of motherboards actually come with heat sinks for the M.2 drives. But, but I might want to think in this cooling solution, I might want to think about where that in, where that drive is and see if mm -hmm. I can get some air right to yeah. pass by it to kind of move some of that heat away, right? Whether it's going to be up underneath the board or it's going to be sitting on top of the board. If I'm not pulling, it just got me thinking, if I'm not pulling the CPU heat away, that may be collecting in a, mm -hmm. in a poorly vented case, that may be collecting in the case. And then that the, the NVMe is going to, is going to, is going to get um, stifled. It's going to get uh, suffocated, basically. If you're yeah, not you see that. With, I mean, that can be with any components. We right. see that a lot lately on motherboards with their power delivery components on the motherboard. 
they'll get so hot where you'll their CPU will throttle as well, um, just from that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just you have to have good airflow throughout the case to, per, to pretty much to go across most of your components. Okay, no, it's good. It's a really good reminder. I get into this every once in a while. We've got I've got a board that's got some software where you can monitor the temperature and I throw those up. I just wish that was in Windows, to be honest. Yeah. Like, why can't that just be a part of the dashboard in Windows? But I'd probably watch it a lot more. I do. I have gotten into the habit since I'm doing some mining and some other stuff of just keeping the task manager up so I can kind of see what's going on. I like, like Mike, yep. I like to monitor that. I don't worry about my CPU temps, but doing this burst coin mining that we've been doing for the last couple of years, I've blown through a couple of drives that I know they died because of heat. And it got me thinking like, oh, I should have probably vented my hard drives a little bit better because there's a big difference on a hard drive, especially on a spinner. There's a big oh, yeah. difference between it running passive and a little bit of air running across it. Just a little bit, right? Keeps it so much cooler uh, from a from an outside, at least a case temperature perspective. So again, we didn't, we, we weren't going to, that wasn't in the notes, but it, it was kind of got me thinking that's the other performance piece in your case inside the case that could go horribly wrong if it's not if you don't have some air going across it yeah definitely yeah. and if you want to get into monitoring um jim if you want to check out uh an app called hw info that will give you pretty much every sensor that's available on your computer um down to speeds uh, power, voltages, temperatures, yeah. yeah, everything, and you can have this I've massive this Yeah, you can have this yeah. massive display of everything that you want to see. Yeah, and it feeds, I would, that's what feeds into rain meter, right? Probably, Probably, yeah. yeah, I think that's what my rain my rain meter uses is HW info. Yeah, when when I was starting to lose some of the early drives, and I was just trying to figure out like, hey, how do I get in here and monitor this on a regular basis? I I tested a couple, and I think that HW info was one, um, uh, and I think that's free. Is that a free app? Yeah. You guys yeah, know? That's yeah. Fair. One we should have added to Schoonover's uh, list of free apps from Ooh, last yeah. week that we were talking on, but that's another that's another good one to throw in there. Okay. From um, uh, Ryan, you said you didn't have it to show, but mm -hmm. when we think about custom, is that, are yep. we really to the point where it's kind of just like snap them in and they're together and fill the thing up and you're good? Or is it a little more... Sort of. <laughs> no, there's a little Bob, more to it. Bob was laughing at that. <laughs> so the all-in-ones, right? They're all-in-one for a reason. They've got a yeah. sort of a reservoir, a pump, a, a CPU block, the fans, the radiator, the tubes, all of that, right? So if we want to get custom with it, well, now I have to determine uh, a CPU block. So what uh, am I AMD or Intel, and what what sort of platform am I on there? Sometimes the block will work for AMD or Intel. It just kind of depends on uh, the, the company you're going with. Um, radiators right we can think about thickness and fin density right um how how dense densely packed are the fins in the radiator that's kind of de going to determine well do i need more static pressure on my fans in order to push air through there to cool this properly do i want to go um soft tubing or do i want to go hard tubing on the cooling right hard tubing looks really nice and looks really good but it's a lot harder to do than soft tubing um, and then we have to think about fittings. What what sort of uh, bends and angles am I going to need to uh, successfully route liquid all the way through all these components? Pump and reservoir. So each each of these components takes some time. Um, some uh, companies that design and offer components offer um, like little building systems web pages where you say, oh, here's here's my components, and they'll kind of build out for you exactly you know what components you need to cool it. And they'll say, you need this many fittings and this water block for that motherboard and CPU and this one for this graphics card. And we know your case takes a, you know, 240 or 360 millimeter radiator and they just set you up and here's a bundle package for you. Give us money and we'll give you parts. Uh, so you can you can do it a multitude of ways um, now. So just takes take some time. And I always recommend asking someone that's familiar with it to kind of look over your components, right? So I ordered up a bunch of components from Alpha Cool. Those are the ones that are going to be here tomorrow. And I reached out to our friend Dave at Alpha Cool. Said, "Hey, I'm pretty pretty sure that I've got everything lined out for this, but can you take a look at this just to to make sure uh, everything's good?" And you know, he went through the parts. Yep, everything looks good there. But I'd recommend maybe some different fittings uh, to allow for some flexibility in the future if I ever wanted to change something. Right, so. Definitely something to look look out for. There's a great subreddit for liquid cooling. Most of the 
uh, component manufacturers have a message board or community, a discord, something like that, that you can go and get help at as well. So um, Ryan, if you had a choice in, in money, you know, they're, they're close in price. Do you mm -hmm. go all in one or do you do, would you do custom? Oh, I mean, I would go custom. They're not the same price by any means. No, uh, right, you will spend right. so much more on custom, but I would, yeah, definitely go custom. That's what I'm really, I can't wait for tomorrow. Like, okay. I, I can't wait to get this box. <laughs> we'll have to circle back circle around on. with you. Bob, what about you? Custom or all in um, one? Custom if somebody else does it, because I actually <laughs> don't do custom water cooling. I would love to learn how. It's just a time constraint. Like right now in my main system, I run an AIO, uh, but AIO is just e ease of use. It's it's mm -hmm. it's the water cooling or liquid cooling that you can install and be a total beginner okay. um, to do, and it and they work, and you don't have to service them, and most of them have at least a three year warranty, so you're pretty much good to go. Uh, on all well, of that. and that's all the nightmares that I heard early when it came to liquid cooling mm -hmm. was a pipe, you know, <laughs> bursting or you know, coolant all over your parts. Yeah, yeah. And and it kind of early on, it's like, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to. You know, I, mean, I, I ruin stuff enough stuff as it is. I don't know if I need to ruin it, you know, with my own cooling. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so. it's definitely a possibility, more so with uh, putting it together yourself. The all in ones, they do a pretty good job of. Uh, of getting them sealed up at the factory. There's a so couple that actually, I think that a company called Deep Cool, they make an AIO that they say it's completely leak proof. Like it will never leak, mm -hmm. they guarantee it. Uh, but yeah, most of these, you don't hear about that. Like, especially the no. AI AIOs, you don't hear about it at yeah. all. I think we've gotten uh, past that, just yeah. to be honest. Right. Yeah. I, I think those days are over. But in the early days, it seemed like I was hearing yeah. about that a lot. It, it did kind of keep me away from it because I was just like, I don't know if I want one more thing to have to monitor all the time. And I was hearing stories of it leaking and then ruining a motherboard or ruining a, a GPU or something like that. You know, that's the last thing you do is want to buy a $1,500 GPU and then have coolant leak, yeah. right? Yeah. Leak all over it, right? It's getting expensive now. Yeah. Let's, let's talk GPUs really quick. Cause I think this sure. is an area where, you know, the, the acceleration of our, of our GPUs has been ridiculous. Like just if we think in the last five years of, where we've gone, where we came from and where we've gone to and just the price of them as well. And I, again, I'm, I, you know, I have two 1060s uh, in my, in my box uh, side by side, by the way, they cool different that way that the one underneath the other one mm -hmm. doesn't do quite as well. Right. So I have to, I rigged up some cooling underneath it so that it would at least have some, something moving on it to keep it from, from overheating. And I've seen some aftermarket, cooling options uh, for GPUs. So let me start with this question. I'm getting a GPU today because I'm, I want a game thrown in a, in, a, in a box that I have. Do I have to worry about anything beyond the stock, the stock cooler that comes with it at that point? Or is that going to be good enough for me? I think it, for the most part, it should be good. Um, the, the thing with the, especially if you're going to get say a non-reference design GPU that's like say one from Asus Gigabyte MSI, they make their own custom cooling solution for the graphics card. So they they test it. It's typically better than if you got say like the NVIDIA Founders Edition card or the AMD, the stock AMD card. Um, it's gonna have better cooling. When you get into aftermarket cooling solutions for GPUs, it's it's a little tricky because you basically have to disassemble the card that you've already bought, um, which you can break things that way. Uh, yeah, they're delicate. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, you look at them and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to take a screw out of this thing. Yeah. Right? The, the fans yeah. seem a little, you know, they're not, they, they seem a little more dainty. They seem a little more precision maybe is the right. Mm -hmm. probably, instead of dainty, that, that was a bad word, but you know what I mean? Just delicate. And, um, and so I, that is an area, but I've watched YouTube videos of folks modding these and putting coolers on them and, and running, just running them hard. And, uh, and I imagine you could do that as well. Yeah, it's not, I would say it's definitely not as popular to replace the cooler on a GPU or a video card, um, with an aftermarket cooler. For a while, there were there were companies that were making them where you could get 
some improved cooling performance and, you know, maybe some noise reduction, but the, the coolers that come on these that are, you know, two and three PCI slot thick and uh, just these beefy coolers and back plates, they're going to do a perfect job for everybody where you really come into taking these apart is going to that custom liquid cooling design uh, where you have to take all the screws apart and cut little pieces of thermal transfer material in order to make uh, contact between, you know, your voltage regulators and your, your chips and everything with the, the block itself. That's when it really gets uh, complex uh, and complicated, but it, have you there's done still that? options Ryan, have you done that at all? Uh, I have, I had, uh, this is older, older type stuff back in the day for like a uh, GeForce 8800, like GS. So this was, I mean, you're over 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, but I had, I did a review on a, um, Arctic, um, cooler and it, it was just this big, you could use it passively. It was, it was as big as the video card, just an array of, of aluminum fans, similar to some of these you know, coolers that we looked at for a CPU, but they adapted that technology to a GPU. And instead of uh, the cooler making contact with each of the memory modules and things like that, they gave you the little um, stick on heat sinks for your memory, right? So uh, then you could strap fans onto these coolers. Um, but I'm, I'm really like excited, but nervous to tear into my 2070 Super. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a $530 card when I bought it. That's a lot. That's a, that's the most I've ever paid for a GPU, right? And you go up a level to the 2080 and higher and you're over a thousand dollars. So um, I'm excited, but I'm nervous. That's so. my biggest thing. That's why I haven't done it. Cause I'm just like, I look at my computer and I'm like, I more excited than nervous though, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm more nervous to get the footage right and uh, make sure everything goes smooth with that, that process. So. Uh, it'd scare me to death. I, I wouldn't, I know, you know, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I do a, a whole bunch of other things. I just be afraid to, I'd be, I'd screw something up, you know, in yeah. the process, strip something out. Mike, would you, uh, you got a thousand dollar GPU. <laughs> Are you gonna you gonna mod it with a with a cooler? No, no, that that stuff scares me. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it's funny. Historically, I've been such a like a, however the manufacturer sent it, keep it that way. And I have um, when I got into building computers, I kind of started to get away from that a little bit and and really tear stuff up. And especially when I, even in my regular life, right, like make it useful, right. I'm like, well, it's just a it's a machine. It's supposed to do stuff. Make it more useful if you can mod it. But uh, something like that, that expensive. Mm, I See, now, Mike, it. if you had like a 20 series card, uh, Alpha Cool has their newer like uh, heat sinks and coolers for those that will tie right into that cooler that you've got. So those quick disconnects, it comes with those. You can just expand it. Boom. You're, well, you're okay, that, might, that might get cool. me. That might get me. That <laughs> might. <laughs> yeah. This 1660 is, uh, I think the form factor is pretty close. I wonder if I could get it to fit. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about that one. Okay. I don't know if I know. I'll, be, I'll, have to, I'll have to go grab a 2070. There, there you go. Guys, on GPUs, any other any other thoughts on cooling or, you know, for most people, here's what I hear you saying. For most people, stock cooling is going to be just fine. Make sure your case is ventilated well. It's going to do its job, especially if you can get the CPU heat out of there to begin with. That may be a great way uh, or a great way to start it. Otherwise, it's a pretty extreme situation to, to, to maybe – Go yeah. beyond stock cooling yeah. on a GPU. Would so, you guys agree with that? Yeah. One thing I will mention, and it's kind of a trend and kind of goes back and forth, is vertically mounting your GPU. So mm -hmm. instead of standard horizontal mounting, um, where we've got some cases where they'll mount it uh, vertically, right? Sometimes that gets pushed up to the side of the case um, towards, you know, especially on glass side panel cases. Well, now you're starving those fans for mm -hmm. airflow and they mm -hmm. don't get as much. Um, so that's something to, to consider there, right? Um, uh, some cases so you, aren't designed so you get for that, your but... drill out and you just drill through that glass exactly some <laughs> some cases they'll, they'll make brackets so you can modify a case that wasn't designed for that to to accommodate that um but yeah again you're going to be uh maybe at a different uh positioning than what would be ideal for a card so if you're thinking about a build altogether and we're, we're thinking um it sounds to me like i really need to kind of if, if i want performance i kind of really need to put all the parts together first like mm -hmm. what am i putting them in there so what's the cpu what's the gpu what am i going to talk about for hard drives how wh what are their thermal properties so in other words how hot do they run am i even looking at the specs to be like what are their max temperature if i'm gaming or you probably get some examples then you probably want to do, I mean, it sounds like to me, you want to spend a bunch of time on the case at that point to say, okay, 
this going, these parts going in this kind of case, because it'll allow for this kind of cooling, or it'll allow for these kinds of fans. Is that kind of, at this point, instead of picking the cool case first and jamming the parts in, is it the other way around? I think people go in both directions. Yeah. Some people that that case is like exactly. everything to them. And, and it, that's yeah. kind of how it was with this case. I love the design. I know it's not the most thermally efficient, but I'm going to deal with, with yeah. those, those issues. Uh, Bob, any yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, I think a lot of people, you, you will see it. Um, I can't talk about it, but there, there's going to be companies that are going to release a case and they're going to have three different versions, one for water cooling, one for, air cooling and then the one that looks pretty that's all glass nice. so you'll see companies have the same a case that almost looks the same but it's will have versions for ones for performance and you you still see it like fractal design they mm -hmm. have a they have a case that you can get it with high airflow or you can get it with like the glass so um but yeah it's it's kind of like if you like a certain case, you're going to get that case. If that's what you want, you're going to get it. And then you're going to yeah. figure out how I can make this cool. Like, you know, how I can cool it the best. Um, but typically when I'm doing a system, I, I look at the cases the first thing. I That's, mm. okay. that's you know, because okay. I, yeah. I want a specific look. I know what I'm right. going for. And right. I know that that case is going to support all the other hardware that I have. We had Jay Madison on a couple of weeks ago. He, yep. of course, he builds the just the smallest. I mean, his specialty is kind of these small builds, right? And that's also another, I mean, the thermal, um, you know, the the temperatures, big considerations uh, into what, it, but it's for that, it's almost like, well, it, we get what's good enough in there. You know, mm -hmm. they, they try to worry about sound and fit and getting the hot air out, um, but, but all, and getting performance, but it's kind of that combination. That's kind of kind of what I hear you guys saying. Like, okay, I'm going to go for looks, and then I'm going to figure out the components that give me the best uh, performance, kind of based around the limitations that I have. Where I I may the opposite. I, I may take it and say I want to get my components. I really don't care. I, I'm going to ship the case away, where nobody's going to see it anyways. I'm going to want max performance. If it's an ugly case, as long as it keeps it cool. So I guess it depends where you want to. Or you, I'm also not a light guy. Like I don't put, I don't put any, <laughs> I don't put any lights in my, although that's not true. I do have two fans and they do have lights. So it's a, <laughs> one white light. <laughs> so, so technically they do, but so I guess there's a couple different ways to come kind of, to kind of approach it, just depending what your priorities are. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Okay. Cool. Are there any other, when we think about technologies that have come along with cooling, is there anything new or anything else we didn't talk about in here um, uh, along these lines? Anything you guys want to uh, promote or or talk about? Maybe, maybe things that are coming up or what? Anything we missed? I mean, oh, I'll say they're good. I'm just going to mention like the the cooler that I'm using in my case right now is one uh, an all in one from NZXT. Um, it's their Kraken Z73. So it's a 360 millimeter cooler, uh, meaning it you know has a 360 millimeter radiator with 320 millimeter fans. Cool thing about this is on the um, water block that goes on the CPU with that coarse air we showed, it was just kind of a plastic cover with some uh, RGB LEDs. This one has an LCD. So right now mm -hmm. I look over and it's showing me an active temperature graph for my CPU and my GPU, but I can put a Think Computers logo on that screen and have it be animated and I can do all sorts of crazy cool stuff with it. So I, I really like that. I think mm -hmm. that product is just really neat. It's gimmicky but it's also useful right because i do i look over it at it all the time to say hey what's my cpu and gpu right now what's the retail on that Ryan? oh man uh i'll Maybe find it uh 240 or 270 yeah right. I, I think, yeah yeah it's a um, lot higher than the standard all-in-one yeah. price yeah. yeah so for me the one thing that I, I really like about cooling is that we can do things like this which i'll bring over here um, this is, I think, this is 16 liters, and this is a small form factor uh, PC from Corsair. It's called the Corsair One, and what's cool about it is that both the CPU and GPU are liquid cooled with all-in-one coolers, and then there's a single fan at the top. And this small little thing, which is like, again, 16 liters, it's it's very very small. Um, it is more powerful than my computer that's sitting next to me. Mm. It has the latest components. It, check down here. it 
has everything and it's so small and we've seen you know this is a custom built pc but we have cases from nzxt they have their h1 um which is i think 18 liters uh it's a little bit bigger than that but that's one that you could build yourself um and that we have these either liquid cooled, like all in ones, or even, you know, certain fans and certain heat sinks that we can put in these very small builds that will keep these components nice and cool. So that, uh, that computer reminds me of an actual <laughs> functioning version of, a uh, the old trash can Mac pros that they came out. Yeah. With, right. Yeah. Where you're sending all that air right up the center through the one circle fan on the top, but that yeah, Mac Pro never took off. Yeah. This, uh, this What's actually the model has, on that again, Bob, this What's is the, the Corsair one. I think it's the i200. i200, yep. Yeah, so this is the new one that has a 2080 Ti and a uh, 10900K in it. Wow. Um, yeah, so, so but it's a lot of power in that form factor. This, this is, I think, $3,500, so it's, oh, it's very... Yeah, it has... Uh, That's why it's holding perform. it with both hands. <laughs> it better perform. <laughs> it's, it's actually... It's, it's very heavy, and it's all metal, which is pretty cool. But it, there's radiators on both sides, so you have radiator here, uh, on the GPU side, and then radiator here on the CPU side. So um, it's like and said, no, no fans on those radiators, right? It's just the single fan yeah. up top pulling air through the sides and up and out. Yeah, but it's, I was really impressed with this. I'm not, a, because I'm a build it my own self kind of guy, I'm not really, I don't like, cause, like, you know, I don't like pre built, but the one thing I really liked about this is that I couldn't do this myself. I couldn't build something this small and this compact that would actually work like this. Um, and it's technically not that expensive for what it is. If I, we actually tried to go on PC part picker and make this, and it was like $400 more expensive for this. Um, and you're not going to get a case that's this small that you could actually do it in either. So. It was like I said. It was, I was just really impressed with it. What they're what they're able to do with liquid cooling uh, in the single fan is actually really impressive. So, yeah, it's engineering, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean they've engineered yeah. it well, and that's one of those kinds of things where you can do that in that setting. So in, in this case, if you're going to spend that kind of money, I mean, yeah, it's fun to build it, but it, it may make more sense yeah. just to just to pick it up. That'd be a great. I'd see. I don't. I mean, it's tall. It's not. I mean, it's kind of. It's kind of pretty, but it's kind of not too. You know, you're there are of, RGB yeah. fans on the front, so you might. Well, but that'd be perfect for me because I don't really care. Like RGB lights. Light, right? I mean, you know, I just want light. performance yeah. out of the thing. Yeah. So that would be, um, uh, Mike. What have you? What have you picked up from the last hour? We've been we've been chatting. You going to do anything different? Did this sway you in any way to do to, to do more of something? I mean. Well, you got a new ham box, so you you, you know you can't. Yeah, go I can't be spending, spending money, money right now. <laughs> yeah, that ham radio was a uh, uh, not wife approved technically. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> yeah, uh, sh I told you, don't. She's say right that upstairs. Part. She's yeah, right I upstairs. Know. She can hear me. Um, uh, well, it sounds like I need a twenty series card though, so I can do the custom water block that ties into the cooler that I have. Uh, the the Alpha Cool Ice Bear cooler. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, wait for maybe next month or two and. Um, okay. For a new GPU release. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I like talking about all this stuff because I never, I didn't know anything about it before, and I reached out to Ryan a lot when I was doing it, and and the whole, you know, pressure in the case, right, direction of fans, things like that, makes a makes a makes a big difference. And the dust was a big thing. And I think for first time builders of pretty PCs, like I said, you can be a builder for a long time, but the first time builder of something's gonna be seen, uh, all that stuff makes a pretty big difference. What do you, before we wrap this up, Ryan, I'll start with you. What are you excited about just from a tech gadget perspective, not, not beyond cooling and the stuff we've talked about. You're also in the gadget world. You live yeah. in this. There's a bunch of kind of cool stuff coming out around Christmas time. This is a question I start asking now, the guests starting now till Christmas. What are you looking forward to? I, I, I would say a drone. But I already okay. bought it, so like <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. All right. Um, All right. So it, was, it would probably be that. Man, I don't know. Um, have you been Have you I'm, been flying it much? A little bit. I've got. I've just been busy with a lot of stuff. I'm going to be flying it a lot more, and then I've got a project coming up that uh, kind of uh, going to use it a lot for that uh, to survey some some land and stuff um, to make videos and just try and do a little more videography and stuff. So I would say video, just video in general, right? Learning to use the equipment that I have better 
um, to, yeah. you know, I don't need a fancy new camera. Obviously the drone gets me up in the air, but uh, um, if so I wouldn't have bought it, I'd family. say that's what it would be. You've told your family already, no Christmas presents. Right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you're good. You're yep. good. Basically. I'm good. Okay. Good. Maybe some chocolate and some other maybe a, maybe new lens or something. <laughs> Bob, what what do you as you look out over uh, the, the well the, obviously I'm excited for the graphics card launch, but mm-hmm. beyond that, uh, I have been looking at drones too. I'm I uh, I assume that DJI will be announcing something for holiday. I also need to get a new phone, so I'm an iPhone mm-hmm. guy. I know you could, oh. most of you guys aren't iPhone guys, but no, I have an I, 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 I am too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I have an I, iPhone X or iPhone 10, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I've had for since it came out, and I this next generation I will be upgrading. So I'm excited to see what they do. Especially like I love taking pictures on my phone because that's what I have, and it's just. This camera just seems a little dated now. I still take good pictures on it, but it just seems a little dated. You um, are in the same exact boat. I'm on the 10, <laughs> and so I'm probably going to be upgrading this year. Now I'm, it's what, two and a half years out, and the yeah. battery's starting to get a little low and things like that. You know, after two years, Apple I has actually, that thing, and they flip the switch, and it turns into a shitty phone. <laughs> I haven't noticed that at all on this. There is no reason for me to upgrade. The only reason I want to upgrade is better camera quality, really. Okay. Um, and I've, see, that's weird because I've been totally fine with the camera quality. My battery has just been uh, depleting pretty quickly really? throughout the day. Oh, yeah. I'm plugging in at, at noon because I'm already at wow. 48%. Oh, um, and I don't man. know what I, I, I am on it a lot for work, right? Because I run Teams on it uh, while mm. I'm putting doing stuff. It's easier just to use my phone for Teams. I mean, I'm using it constantly, but it's still, even if I let it sit there, it's, it's, it's going pretty quick. There was that one time you dropped it in the lake. I mean, but besides that, <laughs> that besides that, that one is, time, you know, Hey guys, I'm on an eight plus like let, and this wow. thing is just rocking. Like I paid it off. You know, I did the two year cause it's interest free. Why wouldn't you? Right. And, and I paid it off last year at this time. And, and I'm just going to hold on to this thing until it dies because it's, so far battery's been great. Like I think the battery gate thing is over just to be honest. I think they've, you know, they got their hand slapped for that. And I, th- yeah. I don't think they're doing it anymore. I did get, we had the sixes and we did get the class action lawsuit paperwork where you can get, I think 50 bucks. If you had an iPhone six, uh, Apple will pay you back 50 bucks for their battery gate <laughs> uh, thing that they had on there. But yeah, I have an eight plus Ryan. What are you, what are you using for a phone? I have the pixel four. Okay. XL. So and how long went, have you had that? Uh, I got it last fall, like right when it came out. Okay. Um, before that, though, I was on the first gen Pixel XL. So okay. I had it for three about three years and then moved yeah. over to, yeah. to my, this. My kids are, this is the weird part. My whole family's Android and I'm I'm the iPhone guy. And it's just <laughs> it's just so bizarre. But I, I too, I think I'm just going to wait until it dies. And then I'll pick up whatever the latest generation iPhone is at that at that point, whatever the right price point is. But geez, it's it's. I remember we used to be able to get cell phones for two hundred bucks. Yeah, that's what when I did this upgrade. Um, I think it was when they, you know, I think, and I this is the upgraded one with more storage. So I think this costs more than a graphics card. Uh, like, yeah, a, yeah I think oh, it's yeah. thirteen hundred dollars when I got it. So that's yeah. that's a lot of money for a phone, yeah. considering like you said, you used to every you know every couple of years just two hundred bucks, and you know, yeah, no, it used to seem like that was a. No brainer. They subsidize them. I'm not sure they were as expensive to make in those days. Yeah. So I, I don't think we we're getting over that much. I mean, remember those phones? They were, you could literally run them over and then you're like, oh, it's okay. It still works. <laughs> you know, now you breathe on it the wrong way and the screen, you know, cracks. Yeah. So although that's gotten, that's gotten a lot better too. Mike, any, any gadgets you're, uh, well, we know we, you, you had a mm-hmm. radio, but besides yeah. that one. Any gadgets you're looking forward to uh, as we come up to Christmas? Yeah, they're all ham radio related now. I took my right. general and passed it, so I have a whole new slew of uh, um, bands I can operate on, and that's all HF. And so my whole Christmas list now is antenna stuff and um, antenna analyzers and and soldering kits and all that nerdy fun ham radio Ham stuff. nerd. Ham you're nerd. you into a ham nerd. I am. I love oh, it. Oh, my God. So – Next week, McCabe, Dave McCabe's coming on to talk about, we're going to do some lawn nerd stuff. So if you're, if you're thinking about that, we'll be talking about kind of fall prep to get your, your lawn ready for the winter. And then the week after that, we're going to catch up with Mike in this ham addiction <laughs> that he has gotten into. And so if you want to hear how far down the rabbit hole, which I think. Yeah, we're going to do some far. ham on the show. We're going to do some digital yeah. modes. We're going to do some screen cool. capture while we do some digital modes. We'll, we'll show you guys around. 
Bob, Ryan, thanks for uh, taking some time uh, tonight sure. to hang out with us. Again, if you want to get all things uh, Think Computers, thinkcomputers. I said that right, right? Think Computers? Is, yes. Am I getting that right? Okay. Thinkcomputers.org. As soon as I said that, I thought that doesn't sound right. But <laughs> I want to make sure we're getting that. Thinkcomputers.org. You guys podcast Wednesdays. Is that the, is it the same time? And they can follow you on, on YouTube just like they do here to be able to yeah. get that notification. What time is that? What time do you guys do that on Wednesday? That is 730 Central. Yeah, seven thirty seven. Okay. Right on, right on. Or is there like a, a usually show right on goof around like yeah. we do? Or no, nah, we don't. We don't do any pre. We just, should probably do a pre-show. Now I think about right it. off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he, he's always like, "All right, you can do the intro today." Yeah, he pulled that one on me yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I like I I like a little pre-show. Mike and I were talking uh, in our in our pre-show before you guys joined. The I'm just kind of getting prepped, and and I said, you know, it's just kind of fun to goof around. Oh. Mike's got that camera that <laughs> he, goes, he didn't press his focuser. <laughs> so he's, he disappeared once already. And I, I removed him here. I'll, I'll um, I can do the, um, I can pull him out. Ah, oh, sorry, Uyghur, you're out one mistake <laughs> and you're out. Ah, we'll pull him. We'll pull him back. Apparently we'll 30 minutes went by fast. And I thought you're right. I, I had not hit my focus remote <laughs> in the last no, 30 minutes. No, right on. But Gentlemen, thanks for, for coming on tonight. Thanks for the info and doing it. Thanks for being great partners in what we do. You guys, absolutely. We, you kind of have joined the community and, uh, and we share a lot of the same listeners. I want to encourage you, if you're a Home Gadget Geeks listener, you should definitely be subscribed or listening to YouTube, their podcast um, as well. And it's available. There'll be a link in the show notes uh, if you want to be able to do that. And you guys are just really great at kind of what I like, which is kind of the realistic reviews like not the you know i've watched some of these reviews and it's just kind of like yeah nobody's ever gonna do that like why <laughs> would why would you and you guys kind of bring it to to more of the average guy and i don't know who has an average guy site but if somebody had an average guy site they would probably fit in what you guys are doing pretty well so i appreciate your guys' work hang tight for me let me close this up and then we'll do a little post show just a quick a couple quick reminders one um Big thanks to Christian and all that he does over there at Maple Grove Partners and keeping our site up. They actually, he just installed some redundancy. So now if you if you host on Maple Grove Partners, it's it's not single site. He's got some failover. Uh, you know, Christian's doing it right. So if you need hosting for anything, he'll basically build a custom plan for you. Mike? His you customer something? support is like, with me split especially with add people like me i switched my site over i had had the ham radio site i switched it over to something that i never ended up using i sent him a message like two weeks ago i was like hey do you have a backup of what i did like a year ago can we go back to the ham radio site within a few hours he messaged me back hey yeah you're back up and running yeah back to the old url yeah. you had to switch the url had a backup yeah. from a year ago that guy is amazing he's a Rock freaking solid. genius he's yeah, just a genius he so is. Plans start as little as ten dollars a month for full hosting, and he'll just do anything you want. Just tell him you listen to Home Gadget Geeks. He'll do. Tell anything. him Jim sent you. That's it. <laughs> uh, MapleGrovePartners.com and uh, Christian will get you set up there as well. Don't forget you can send us an email, and I always appreciate hearing from you guys. So Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. If you just want to say hey, I appreciated this, and there's a few of you every every week who send me a note, and I always appreciate that. It's nice to kind of get some feedback on what you liked and what you didn't. Of course, this show you're going to like 100%. Of it. So I just start sending your emails now. Jim loved every part of it. Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. And then um, don't forget, if you want to download the app, HomeGadgetGeeks.com, and you can have that on your phone on both Android. So Ryan, you could have it, or us iPhone users could have it because it's free on both platforms. HomeGadgetGeeks.com, download it today. We'll do some post-show. Thanks for coming out. For those that joined us live, we'll do a little bit of post-show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.